Hello, this is Thorsten Steinbach, architect at IBM for data and analytics in the cloud. And today I'm going to talk to you about serverless technology and how it is applied to big data analytics. When we look at big data in the, the past decades, we can see that there has been, a, or there is a traditional form factor of big data systems uh, that has been used for many decades already, and this is the form factor of a data warehouse. So this is a highly integrated system, highly optimized for handling big data queries, big data analytic um, in a very efficient manner. Nevertheless, we had about the, around the year 2000, Hadoop coming up and being adopted very rapidly and gaining a lot of popularity and is now widely adopted in the industry. Even though it also does big data analytics, so why is that? Why Hadoop came up? So this is because it brought, in addition to this integrated system, now more openness to the table, more openness in terms of the type of data that it could handle, data formats, bring your own data formats, uh, the types of analytics, analytic libraries and languages that can be supported, and also the flexibility in terms of the hardware, the deployment options that you can have. You can bring a custom hardware, even heterogeneous hardware. So that's why Hadoop basically gained a lot of traction and is now widely adopted. Today, however, we are seeing a trend that basically results in a yet another form factor of doing big data analytics. And this trend is driven by actually one thing that is happening, which is the era, the race of cloud. And uh, another thing that actually goes hand in hand a little bit with the race of cloud is the consumption behavior of many people, of end users, to be more um, oriented on a sharing economy. So people are using more and more just ride shares instead of just renting a car, not to speak of buying a car just to get around. Or they're going with just with Airbnb just to sleep a night somewhere. So this consumer behavior is also applied now to IT. And what actually this term serverless is, is actually exactly this. So serverless is, in fact, the sharing economy for IT. And it is, it is enabled by cloud. And it is, in fact, the most consequent usage model of cloud is serverless. And many of you have heard the term serverless. And probably most of you will associate a thing called function as a service with serverless. Many of you think it's synonymous which is not exactly true, but that's what basically many people think of. And function as a service is, I have my code that you need to run, my business logic, but I don't provision dedicated system, dedicated hardware, or not, not even dedicated software. I'm just sending it to a service and say, please run it for me. Run it for me uh, maybe that many times. So how, how to scale out, it's all done ad hoc. It's basically uh, hiding the fact that there are servers. That's why it's called serverless. Now, as I said, this is what many people think of when they hear the term serverless. But serverless is more than just function as a service, especially when we now look at, at, back again at our domain here, which is data, big data and analytics. The problem with big data and analytics is that we are talking about state. State has to be kept, data, my data has to be kept safely, durable, uh, reliably. I need to be able to access it anytime when I want it. And that's what these systems provide. But now in the cloud, we have new options. We can actually uh, abstract the storage of data itself as a cloud service on its own. And that's also what's happening now in the cloud. And there is the basically cloud native storage of object storage. And object storage is basically serverless storage because you do not provision disk volumes, do not, you, do not, you do not configure disk volumes you just bring your data and the system figures out how to store it and how to basically also distribute it and make it highly available and so on. It's highly abstracted. You just have a REST API where you upload and download your data. And uh, you can come with kilobytes of data and going up to terabytes of data in the same organizational unit. And the thing about now why is it serverless is also that it's a pay-as-you-go consumption model. You don't just 
use it as you go, you also pay as you go, which means you're just paying for the gigabytes that you're storing at this point right now. And if you store less, you will be paying less in a very elastic, completely seamlessly elastic way. Now, when we now talk about big data analytics, it's not just about storage of data, but also how can we analyze this data and process this data. And that's exactly what we are now seeing as well, driven by cloud. We're seeing additional services that are made available around object storage, such as SQL as a service, or also that allows you to run SQL, uh, basically on the data and object storage and just be built for this one SQL, depending on how big the SQL was in terms of how much data it had to scan. And you do not pay for a database that is provisioned and standing around. It's just a single SQL and <clears throat> that's it. And there are other things that basically play in, like for instance, messaging as a service. So Kafka as a service, where you're also just paying by the number of messages that are being processed and then eventually stored to the object storage. So there are a series of these services basically coming up and in combination, they are providing this new form factor of a big data and analytics system that is augmenting and uh, actually complementing the existing form factors because even though they are more established and older, there are still a point for using them because they have their sweet spots in terms of their own performance characteristics and response time guarantees. Um, but on the other side, there are maybe, maybe cost effectiveness benefits here. So depending on your business model and um, requirements, you may use this or this or the combination of those things. So I hope this helps to put in perspective how serverless plays into big data analytics and how it basically generates a whole new form factor of big data and analytic systems. Thank you very much.